Beautiful, stunning achievement in, in, in filmmaking. Uh, e Bing and Jason, thank you so much for being here with me uh, today. And congratulations on a, on a beautiful, stunning uh, film. It's just, it's just incredible. 
Um, I, I, I just want to start with the basics. I mean, tell us a little about yourselves, like, you know, who, who you are and how did you get into this crazy game called animation? Let's start with you, E. Can I start it? Yep. Okay. Hi, guys. My name is Yi Jiang. I'm the writer and director of the animated short Wind Up. Um, I'm currently in San Francisco, a quarantine right now, <laughs> but I was born and raised in China. I want to become an animator since I was really young, like five. However, there was almost no animation industry back then in China. And my parents only wanted me to be uh, either lawyer, doctor, or engineer. Uh, so after I finished my master's degree of engineering, I decided to throw all that away and start over, uh, you know, to take charge of my own life. I came to US by myself to chase my animation dream. And um, that's probably the best decision I have ever made. Uh, I got in talent development program of Disney Animation nine months after I arrived in US. Uh, since then, I have been working on animated feature films and triple games for over 10 years now. Uh, my professional experiences ranges from Naughty Dog, Pixar, uh, Walt Disney Animation Studio, and Unity Technologies, of course. Um, before Wind Up, I have made like seven animated short films by myself, but this is actually my first time being a real director. Amazing. And Jason, please, a little bit about you. Yeah, um, my name is Jason Keane. Uh, I was animation director on Wind Up. Um, the, I've been animating for maybe over 12 years now, and um, I'm based in Connecticut. Uh, I come from kind of a long legacy of artists in my family. My grandfather was Bill Keen. He was a cartoonist and the creator of Family Circus. And my uncle is a famous Disney animator, uh, Glenn Keen. And he uh, recently in 2018 won uh, Academy Award uh, for the animated short uh, Dear Basketball by Kobe Bryant and uh, directed Over the Moon on Netflix currently. Um, also, I became a dad just recently, so that's very exciting for me, and I guess he has a lot to live up to. <laughs> all right, awesome. Uh, first of all, love Glenn Keane. I, I, I've interviewed him a lot this year. I joke around that he, I want him to be my dad one day, so <laughs> you, you're the closest thing to it uh, for me. Um, so, so let's start here. You know, How did Wind Up come to be? What is it? And, and who came up with this crazy idea? <laughs> Uh, I wind up actually is inspired by my own personal experiences. Uh, I was often sick when I was a kid, um, but my memory of those days were foggy. Um, but on the other hand, from my parents' perspective, the event was way more serious. Like uh, they actually tried to like spend countless night to take care of me, fight their own emotions and like try to stay strong. I didn't know why they're so worried. Like, because when I was a kid, I thought like I'm invincible. But then when I got older, I started to emphasize with my parents, especially since I moved to US, uh, my family and I are far apart. It makes me the one who always worried about them. Especially recently, since Wuhan is actually my hometown like <laughs> quickly after the news of the whole city got shut down, uh, I got word that my uncle had to stop his cancer treatment because the overwhelming patient, uh, COVID patient. Also, uh, both of my cousins still need to work in the hospital uh, where a lot of their coworkers already got infected. I was terrified and not sure what to do, like far away. I video chat with them as often as possible, but once the camera turns off, all the horrible thoughts just rush back in. And that was the time we were actually crunching for this film. I remember we were animating the hospital sequence when the father actually like sitting on the floor and feel hopeless. Um, that moment, I can totally sympathize with his pain. Um, life imitates art, I think. Um, especially now, a time when people around the world are isolating, craving for connections, and also preoccupied with health and well-being loved ones, uh, the story of Wind Up is quite relevant. 
I mean, it's, it's absolutely relevant. Uh, I mean, first, that that I mean, th during this time, especially uh, during the pandemic, it's been uh, very challenging. J uh, Jason, please, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, I I echo a lot of the uh, the theme in Wind Up, where you know, um, it's absolutely relevant. Uh, I mean, first, that that I mean, th during this time, especially uh, during the pandemic, it's been sorry. Is there? Yeah. It's, oh, okay. it's, I, I get a delayed response. It's fine. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> like the beauty um, of Zoom is Zoom fatigue is real. It's okay. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Should get used to this by now. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it, I had my son during the film. And um, so I think I related a ton, right, um, to, to the whole story. And it definitely, um, when Ebing came to me, I was kind of like, uh, I, I felt for the characters and, um, and I, I had my kind of experience, this was after the film, but man, it, it brought new meaning to the, the film um, where my son, uh, he, he was, uh, the, he had kind of a um, situation when he was born and he was transferred to the NICU. And um, so it was, Again, what Ebing said, life imitates art. Uh, there's definitely, and I know it echoes with the whole pandemic and everything, that um, there's definitely a, this need for this kind of film for hope and not giving up. So, yeah. yeah absolutely. And I think you're, you're touching on something here. And uh, I think both of you have already touched on this. It's deeply personal. And we're in a time right now where the pandemic is living and, and ravaging its way through uh, the world. Uh, and, and globally, especially uh, for both of you, looking at the film and what it uh, what you're able to to portray during this time, how did that feel on that personal note? You know, just you know, people watching this, like like for me, as I'm a parent as well, like sick kids are not the good thing to get me to watch your movie. Typically, like that's usually my like you know have a threshold. Um, but this, because there's a happy ending and there's, uh, you know, some solace in that, can you talk about that personal connection during this time and working on it? Um, I really want people to feel hope. Like, uh, I believe love can actually win through the support of family and friends. Uh, this support and beliefs are special, very special, like when we're making the film and it's probably important for like everyone and during the difficult times like this. Yeah, so Jason? I, I, I agree. Um, it's the same kind of uh, feeling. Um, I mean, during the time it was the beginning of, Ebing can chime in too, it was kind of like the beginning of the, the whole uh, kind of pandemic situation that was happening. We were hearing, we had, um, one of the animators, Yin Ying, was in China. He was getting, and he he was currently in quarantine, so he saw how big it was. And we're here in the news, and, and you know, kind of, is it going to come here? So it was just like uh, it's kind of a scary moment uh, leading up to the to the end of the production, and then finally it, it kind of it, um, got as big as it was. Uh, but uh, yeah, Yibing yeah, was hearing a lot about it too because you know she was trying to go to China during production to see his un her uncle, and it was yeah. hard. hard uh, can you guys talk about uh, the decision to go dialogue free uh, with, with, with the animation, right? you know, to not have uh, the father or daughter interact with each other or with, you know, express anything that's happening around them? Actually, there are like multiple iterations during the story, like making the story. Initially, it had dialogue, but later we chose to go for dialogue free because we believe like music is a universal language and the theme of this story is universal. So we really want the people all over the world able to connect with it. Also, when we compose this melody, we want to make sure uh, the music in this film actually is the main character. Um, it should sound like a song that we could like sing along with instead of like ambient background music. Uh, I think our composer, Joaquin, did a really good job because uh, everyone working on this film end up humming the melody nonstop. 
Yeah, it's it's going to be kind of stuck in my head for a while as well. And and it's funny, especially when it comes to dialogue free. Jason told me I could do a voice in the movie and then cut me out of it. So this is classic Hollywood happening right now before our eyes. Uh, obviously joking. J- uh, Jason, can can you talk about? Um, I guess get into the actual process of making this front to back. Like, how long does something like this take to to create? So for the animation, um, it took about seven months, and that was even. How long was uh, the whole production? The whole production is over like uh, nine months, and it will finish around like February twenty twenty. Huh. Yeah. What one month? One month for every minute that the film uh, <laughs> gets in there, right? Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. Wow. So that is the the, the kind of it was. It's, it was an intense schedule. You know, I I coming from feature, I'm going, well, nine minutes. Uh, we got it. Seven months to do this. How is this going to work? Um, but you know, that's kind of what brought up the uh, kind of uh, using Unity's real time engine, um, which is uh, Ebing will talk to more about. He, she knows more of the tech stuff. Uh, I, uh, but the. Uh, it was kind of a mind blowing revelation for the uh, feature animators uh, that were working on it. Um, Cause we're used to, uh, you know, us as animators were the actors, right? You, you've heard mm-hmm. it all the time. And, um, and we're trying to make these characters come to life. And the, um, with the real time, we're able to see this kind of final image which we call the final render uh, instantaneously. And it becomes that much closer to our performance. Um, it, traditionally, or you know, in, in other studios, the renders take, I don't know, like months uh, to finally see it. And from there, you're kind of like, you know, uh, kind of forgot your original inspiration, but you're still gonna have to adjust certain lightings uh, that, that may not work and, and enhance the performance. Uh, this was, you know, as you stated, being dialogue free, the lighting and, and the eyes and, and all that kind of stuff are extremely important to kind of express the characters. Uh, oh. So um, yeah, I mean, I I enjoyed actually using Unity for it. So I, I that was cool. Absolutely, uh, uh, E. If we can uh, go to the techniques that are used in the film, you know what what are these? Uh, this is something obviously probably new to a lot of us. But what new techniques are used, and what were some of those challenges in getting it? Uh, up there uh, for people to draw. <laughs> actually, <laughs> like uh, one fact is like, we actually changing the story of the film from like very, very end. Like we keep on changing it because at the beginning when like we show, share to the team, it's like, there's something doesn't feel right. And <laughs> we keep on changing it. Like Jason hated it. It's like, how can you do that? Like never happened before. Um, yeah. and. Also, uh, another challenge is like uh, we had we end up had a team all over the world, like ten different countries, and it's hard to imagine how that can work. Uh, we had like uh, 20, 20 artists, and half of the group are from AAA games, and half of the team was from the feature film experiences, and that means like some of us know. Is how to use game engine quite well, and some of us know, know precisely what it takes to achieve like feature animation quality. However, for most of us, this is actually our first time trying to use a real time engine to achieve film quality. Not only that, since most of us are actually working at home, um, so we also need to make sure the film can run smoothly on regular personal computers. Uh, if it crash on one person, that will affect the whole schedule. Uh, so like, so that compared with the other animation that take months to render, we are like millions times faster. That push us actually in the corner. If we want to do this, we have to try new things and we have to invent new features along the way. Um, like, but on the other hand, it's quite rewarding, even when we just figured out one small details, uh, you know, like, but since every single step, we really feel like we're changing the history of real-time rendering. The advantage of real-time rendering, like as Jason said, is quite obvious because in order to make a good film, there's a lot of polishing work you need to do in every step. 
traditionally the artist would have to imagine like what's the film look like in the final production because usually there's a quite big difference between what we see in the current step and what the actual final film will look like. It's really common in the animation production, like we have to drag, a lot of polish work have to drag out to the very end because only then we can see the final, something close to resembling the final image. So that's like why the special effects industry like crunch, people not able to go home, <laughs> like they need to ship the game, ship the sure. game. Um, uh, but like real-time rendering fix that by making each department seeing the result instantly. This means all departments can start together and collaborate and polish their work in parallel. Uh, for example, the animators, like their actors. So it's helped their performance a lot when they actually can see the environments and see the lighting and they can feel the tone of the movies when they're acting, you know. Um, also, um, as I said, like we changing the story quite a bit in the production. Um, it like sometimes we need to like easily move the character and the whole set in a totally different environment, and that's it's unsimple like unthinkable in traditional animation pipeline. But we can do it quite easily in real time. Um, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, I mean, an example real quick is that uh, an animator was animating uh, a run cycle or a run through the scene in, in one of the scenes and um, all of a sudden a tree popped in and he was just like, whoa, I am not going <laughs> to reanimate this whole thing and, and have him just move around the tree. So um, with, with Unity, you're able to just communicate with the set guy and then the lighters and they can change it like that and boom, um, uh, back to normal. So. <laughs> Yeah, good. he was so Pretty scared. Much. He's like, what I can do? I thought the review is today. Like, no worry, no worry. I have one last question for you before I open it up to, to our audience that, that are watching. Uh, what, are, what, are your, what, are, what is your one hope or what are your hopes of people, for, for people to take away from this? What do you want people to take away from this film once they see it, once they experience it? What is that message? you're looking to send out? Mm. I think like believe the good thing will happen even in the most difficult times. And yeah, that's that's how I feel. Jason? I, I mean, again, being that first time dad and we had that scare, um, with our son, uh, I now know for a fact that this film is that much more important. And uh, yeah. um, and I echo exactly what you've been saying. It's the hope, it's that hope when like times are tough, you know, someone's going through something or you're going through something that if you have that hope and, and you have loved ones around you that are as persistent as that father was, um, things can be all right. And uh, um, just wanna, you know, give a shout out to the doctors at the hospital and the NICU nurses, because they're amazing, uh, especially during the uh, pandemic uh, time where they have, you know, yeah. there's all these protocols, but they're still out there as if uh, nothing's going on saving. Yeah. Shout out to all doctors, all yeah. medical. Yeah. It's amazing. Sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, all right. So now I'm going to open up to some questions uh, from our viewers that are watching. I have a question here from Russell uh, Levette, and hopefully I'm saying that correct uh, correctly. Uh, wonderful work, congratulations. What DCC did you use or was the entire, or was this entirely Unity? Oh, we use, you know, the environment artists or character artists probably use ZBrush when they model the character and the animators will mainly use Maya and then you know export it as uh, FBX and then in Unity then uh, they can see the final image. Um, I guess environment and lighting are mostly in Unity. Uh, camera definitely in Unity. Uh, and yeah, uh, it's, it's 
there's some overlapping between other um, other software. And yeah. uh, for animation, we used um, we were able to use a collaborate. They found a system to be able to use Unity plus Maya, so we didn't entirely have to animate in Unity. We Maya is the traditional kind of software animation software, and so um, uh, we were able to animate on that using what we're used to, and then transport that into Unity. Awesome. Uh, from Dan, uh, the first half of this was already answered. How long uh, to produce? We know that's nine months. But how big was the team? Oh, uh, 20 others, I think, in general. Um, yeah, but like some of us are full time and we wear so many hats, like we need to do multiple jobs. And some of us like uh, they're helping of like a few hours per week, something like that. And, and all and all dependent on each other's internet and computers, which in this age <laughs> feels really risky. Because I don't think I could work. Yeah, there. it's the beginning of like we need to make this work. I know, it's yeah. Progressive. <laughs> I mean, now everyone's doing this and you know, working at home, being remote. Everyone better upgrade their 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 FIOS internet. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> uh, from from um from Anne, uh, the girls' home is uh, is on a street that's so unique. Is it a place in the real world? Um, we did took reference of like a uh, west part of Asia, like uh, uh, west part of Sichuan and Tibet, and also like Bhutan, because I really loved architecture from the west part of Asia. Mm. Uh, I, I tried to go one time, <laughs> but you know, the altitude over there is really high, and you know, the car drive just one day we've experienced four seasons. And by the end, we're like really, we don't see any people anymore. We just see like uh, yaks and everywhere is white. And, and I feel like we're going to die because <laughs> the car was like the snow and then you see the fence of the highway is broken. Like means some rocks just fell over there. And I talked to the driver, I was like, do you have any security issues for that? He's like, oh, no worry. I prayed to the Buddha this morning. We will be fine. And <laughs> but then I was like, let's go, let's head back. <laughs> so that's, that, that, that's not a surety. <laughs> I just <laughs> going through But so. yeah, we, like I took a lot of reference pictures. I, I didn't personally see those houses. I, I see you along the way, but but not the the ones in Tibet. Like that's where I actually try to go. Um, yeah. Um, also, we try to like add some like steampunk kind of elements with the Western Asia design. So it's kind of you know combine those. Awesome. Right. By the way, Four Seasons, you're describing the East Coast today. It was like really nice this morning and then it snowed in the middle of the day and it just stopped like out of nowhere. So that's just anywhere that's in the country right now. Uh, from Brian Adams, um, uh, beautiful, heartbreaking and hopeful all at, all at once. What was your inspiration? So obviously, I know you spoke about uh, your personal connection. Jason, do you want to talk about uh, maybe your own personal connection? Well, um, as for... Talking about animation, the inspiration for the individual characters, um, I just want to say Kiki was Ebing. <laughs> uh, I don't know if Ebing has this like spark of energy <laughs> into her, and it was perfect for Kiki because you know, it, um, we wanted to contrast that you know, that love of life, arts, music, uh, versus her situation. And, um, and then for the father, you know, I drew a lot of inspiration for the fact that, you know, my wife was pregnant during the time and me reflecting on how I would feel, which, um, I mean, this is my father now. <laughs> <laughs> then, so Kiki, my daughter. <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, I was, uh, we we're able to connect on those levels. And then, um, and, and I, you know, to give credit to the animation team as well, um, in terms of animation the characters and personality you know they they were able to put um their own kind of uh you know history and their their feelings within the the uh, team um and, and their scenes that they had and it really brought the characters to life so yeah 
Thank you. Uh, not a question, but just a comment. Thought we shared. it. Ashley V. Robinson says, well, now I'm crying in the middle of the day. So this is amazing. So, <laughs> so you guys are the mean kids that made uh, Ashley cry. Uh, que- <laughs> question from Tessa uh, from mamasgeeky.com. Uh, what do you hope that people take away from your short? I think we addressed that a little bit at the end of uh, my line of questioning, but is there anything additional you want to add to that? Besides that belief and, and hope? <laughs> No, kind of covers all bases. <laughs> That's right. It's okay to that can be the, the don't answer. give up. I think yeah. I think also yeah. Like what Ebing is saying, there's there's also on the other side of things of um of the people who help are helping right. So the father is helping. There's a persistence and and a belief right to keep keep going and 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 hope for the best and and um and just see uh, and. Sh- Hopefully it all works out in the end. So um, it's on both sides with Kiki and the father. Uh, another question from Brian Adams. Uh, will the short be playing with a feature alongside a feature, uh, another animated feature that's coming out or is it a uh, standalone? A standalone. Stand- yeah, you're going to build out the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but this yeah. <laughs> one wind up style, I get it. It's good. Up the unity. <laughs> Make some features. Um, Mike Rhodes uh, shares that. That was lovely. Very lush and beautiful. Um, Joe Fryer, was this shot for 3D? There was so much depth in the, uh, to the animation and it looked terrific. I mean, is this 3D animation? Oh. It's not um, where you wear the glass stereo uh, 3D. Oh. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. No, we, we didn't. It was never planned to do that. Or unless... Did you plan this evening at all? Not <laughs> <laughs> right now. Um, so uh, the depth all came from the beautiful lighting and the environments uh, that all the people uh, established in evening, coordinating all that stuff. And um, so it, I'm happy that he feels that way. Yeah, it makes me miss the movies today because I think about like how this would look on an IMAX screen. Yeah, just, right. Like, I, I want to see that. Too. Oh yeah. man, that would be. All right, soon, soon we'll get we'll get back to it. <laughs> yeah, <too>. yeah, right. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> uh, Catherine A. Kaiser, just beautiful. The color throughout is just fabulous. So, uh, so hoping this will be the short before the next Disney film release, which we just learned that it's not. But it's standalone, and you can go see shorts by itself. Um, from Belinda, a beautiful movie. As you watch it, it back. Uh, as you watch it back, does it still affect you emotionally like the first time you saw it? Uh, to be honest, <laughs> since we change the story so many times and we watch it like because we need to like review every shot like more than thousand times. So, so by the end we mute to like we don't know if the story is good anymore. Like mm. <laughs> we watch it so many times, and that's why I was like, let's. Let's show it to the people. We hope people, a lot of people can actually see it. And hopefully they can tell us if it's good or not. Yeah, you have to show it to people so you stop working on it so you don't change it anymore. So it's it's your way out. Like I can't do anything. People have seen it and that's it. I mean, as you as you guys were watching it, like, you know, we watch it along with, with everyone that's watching right now. Are there any things you look at and you're like, God, I could just tweak that right <laughs> jason's i guess yes yeah exactly. i mean animation you can work on it forever i mean it, it never is complete until director or even goes it's good enough let's go yeah. and i mean and it actually is probably better to not you know noodle something for so long but um uh yeah i mean but i haven't actually i i haven't watched it um it's been a while since i watched it and that was the first time uh and it, it it I was like wow I'm I'm it, it did affect me a good amount so uh, I'm pleasantly surprised. <laughs> awesome, yeah. uh, Mike Rhodes asks, uh, can you explain the created real time in Unity for those of us who aren't animation experts? Um, how like so is you know real time game being along or. Oh, for a long time. So uh, we actually pretty much like a AAA game pipeline. And then we just try to, the innovation we got is try to pop up the visual quality to reach feature film. So we actually, a lot of times we have the, 
you know, paint over or actually have other films along the sides. It was like, how to achieve this? How to achieve that? Uh, also, um, for me, uh, when the film actually began, uh, I decided to make a previous version of the whole film you know, first before the cinematographer and editor and animator started. So I think there are a lot of tutorials how, how to make a previous version of, you know, ugly version of the, your film on YouTube. There's a lot like Unity tutorial of that. So I did that and then, <laughs> and then I think it helped a lot because it showed exactly the vision I wanted and explored it like really carefully, uh, clearly because it's actually a film with like soundtrack and everything. And then the other artists will come along and then add their own experience and intuition to the film and improve the previous edit like to something much, much better. Yeah. Um, uh, so if I could just add real quick, since, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm not, uh, wasn't familiar too much with real time, and then I was an animator coming into it. Um, I, I think the simplest way to think about it is um, traditionally we just work in layers. There's an animation, there's a lighting layer, there's um, uh, a rendering, and then there's something else, or you know, a painting, a matte painting. Um, real time, that's all done sim simultaneously, and so you could see the final product as if you're playing a game and you're rotating around. Um, we could do that, you know, with the beautiful lighting and everything where we could rotate that camera around and, and see it um, as it is, as you see the final image. And, um, and again, traditionally it takes like a month to finally see that final image. So that's the major difference. Yeah. Got it. Uh, from Dave Morales, the most important question of the day <laughs> that's about that beautiful music. Like how, how did that come to be? How did we land on that melody? Um, uh, like we, we iteration a lot, like you have to try different things and it's like, this is not what we want. And this is what we want because we know exactly what we want at the very beginning. We want it to look sounds like, sounds like a song that you can sing along with because it's actually in our story is probably the the song the father composed or with Kiki and the daughter and they probably sing along when she was healthy. So we want like create something like that. And, you know, have to make a several version and listen to it, listen to it, listen to it. And then this, this one is what we want. And your case is finally. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, you don't have any of those uh, Little Mermaid sensibilities like in your fingers that you could just kind of Glenn Keane through uh, music? Is music it kind of, you know, I mean, I was hearing the music um, as we, we we didn't have the like final music as we started animating. But I mean, animation, you're always thinking beats and musicality um, in yeah. acting and everything. And that's how we kind of talk and, and, and work. So, um, and, I mean, I think that the composer was awesome. And I think once we started hearing that music, it really enhanced um, the animation. There was that perfect amount of like playful, playfulness to it and sad when it could be sad, but definitely happy. So it, it had this range, that melody. And um, uh, yeah, so I mean, it just made it m that much easier once we heard it and we're like, okay, yeah. I know what needs to be done in animation here. Absolutely. I have, I have time for two more quick questions. Uh, I said Dave asked the most important one, but I actually just got one upped by Sarah Knight uh, Adamson right now. Would love to see both of these characters again. She is captivating. Any plans for a feature film? I would say not yet. And um, so far, didn't really have plan for extending this, but who knows? I mean, one one month for every minute. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're looking at a while before we. <laughs> can get one at that at that pace. It could possibly um, be the fastest fastest done movie though with using the the real time. I'm curious. I'm curious how it would turn out. Um, but really? yeah, All right. I think I think we're open to it. So maybe we have to triple that team of twenty probably and <laughs> get more people more people on board. Yes. Uh, most important uh, from Anne. Where can audiences see Wind Up? 
So how will they be able to discover this film? I think it should be on YouTube when, like today, if I'm correct. I think that's oh, correct. Uh, right, YouTube today. Uh, YouTube today. <laughs> that's gonna be our new thing. YouTube today. Together. That's what I heard. On oh. uh, Unity's channel, right, Eving? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, this is great. So pa pass the word, you know, get get everyone that you know to watch this because I mean it, it is so special. The, the film is 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 fantastic, and also just uh, I, I have to just say something to add here. This really shows what is a big argument in you know I'm a film I'm the film awards editor in this space. You know, shorts can be just as moving, captivating, and important as any big feature films that are, are released in a given year. So it'd be, you know, it's incumbent upon us to give all types of films a chance. It's not just about the hundred minute ones or, and nine minutes is uh is a good time for me to, you know, watch something and go about my, my business. So uh, really great work to, to both of you. I think uh, both of you uh, joining me today. Wind Up is now live on YouTube, so that oh. you'll, you'll know that right now. Uh, if you're interested in an interview with, with the filmmakers, please contact Annie Jeeves. Uh, thank you both for participating. Uh, stay safe, everyone. Wear a mask and uh, be well. And uh, enjoy the rest of this year. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.